And welcome back. Our next guest has received a prestigious Outstanding Investigator Award from the National Cancer Institute. Now, this award is accompanied by a grant to study the molecular and cellular mechanisms leading to two related blood diseases, myelodysplastic syndromes and acute myeloid leukemia. Joining us to share more details, we are pleased to be joined by the co-director of the Blood Cancer Institute and Associate Director of Basic Science at the Albert Einstein Cancer Center, Dr. Ulrich G. Steidel. And thank you so much, Dr. Steidel, for being with us. Uh, good morning. It's my pleasure to be here. It's our pleasure to have you. And uh, congratulations on this award. It's very prestigious. And uh, for people who don't know about this prestigious Outstanding Investigator Award, what exactly is that? Yeah, thank you. Uh, the The Outstanding Investigator Award is is one of the most competitive and, and as you say, prestigious awards uh, of the National Cancer Institute or, or NCI. And the NCI is a federal institute that supports and funds cancer research, both clinical and preclinical, uh, in the entire U.S. And, and the ultimate goal is really to develop new treatments and cures for all different types of, of cancer. And you know, this specific award is, is uh, accompanied by a seven-year, $7 million grant to study the molecular and cellular causes of myelodysplastic syndromes and acute myeloid leukemias, as you mentioned, uh, which are two related uh, blood cancers. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, my, my, my team and I, and uh, within the framework of our NCI designated uh, Albert Einstein Cancer Center and within the Montefiore Health System, uh, we're obviously very pleased and honored uh, to have received one of these highly regarded awards and, and we're very excited about the opportunity to use these uh, grant funds uh, to perform research, to obtain new insights, and to work towards developing new treatments and hopefully even cures, you know, for these usually fatal blood disorders. Yeah. Can you take the time and uh, just explain for our viewers just a little bit more, because we're talking real, you know, medical terms here, but for somebody who doesn't know, um, and I know you're studying about the uh, myelodysplastic syndromes, the acute myeloid leukemia. How uh, can you explain those conditions from a more layperson's perspective for somebody who may not be so familiar? Uh, absolutely. So, so myelodysplastic syndromes or, or MDS, uh, they occur when blood forming stem cells in the bone marrow acquire genetic and non genetic irregularities and then lead to the production of abnormal and, and dysfunctional blood cells. And uh, those cells then outcompete uh, the healthy normal cells. And, and that leads to many of the common symptoms, which include anemia, fatigue infections, bleedings, uh, bleeding and, and others. And um, the, the incidence of MDS in the United States is not entirely clear, but uh, estimates range from 10 to 40,000 new cases annually. And about 30% to half of these patients with MDS will actually then go on to develop acute myeloid leukemia or AML, which is an even more aggressive form of blood cancer. And uh, you know the problem is that uh, treatment for MDS is generally limited to, to preventing or reducing complications, particularly anemia. And the only cure is a bone marrow transplant, which is a therapy, very aggressive therapy, that's not easily tolerated uh, and, and therefore often only feasible for the youngest and, and most resilient patients. I want to talk about the Bronx for a minute because in all the work that you're doing and what we're talking about right now, it plays a very important part with the Bronx. Uh, talk about how the Bronx is connected to all of this. Yeah, so thank you for that uh, question. You know, uh, let, let me start with saying that the work we are doing under this award is is really is fundamental in nature and and will thereby likely be applicable to and and benefit a broad spectrum of patients in the entire U.S. and and in fact worldwide. Uh, however, you know, you're, you're alluding to the very important topic of, of health disparities here. And, you know, while such disparities are particularly well documented um, with regards to clinical cancer care, clinical trials, it's important to note that, that preclinical research also, 
you know, uh, needs to be part of, of this discussion. And, and now, obviously, the, the Bronx is one of the most diverse counties in the entire U.S., and I, what I would like to point out is that almost all of our preclinical work here under this award, but also in general at, at Einstein Montefiore, is done with, with samples from our highly engaged patient community uh, here in the Bronx. And that means, uh, you know, that the results we're obtaining, even in this preclinical setting, um, are particularly relevant to the specific population groups and, and various backgrounds that our patients are from here in the Bronx and, and that are typically less represented at many other centers uh, in the country and, and also internationally. And we, we therefore feel that we're making an important contribution also in, in that regard and, and with, you know, uh, for the Bronx specifically. Yeah, before we go, I just wanna ask the question about, do you ever feel that there'll be a way to, you know, effectively deal with these uh, blood disorders? Uh, talk to us about that. Yeah, so, um, you know, absolutely. So, so the, um, you know, as I mentioned, uh, it's, it's important, uh, you know, to know that while there are treatments for MDS and AML, mainly chemotherapy combinations, the, the clinical outcomes in, in MDS and AML have not significantly improved over the past 50 years, and the cure rates remain below 15% for most patients. And there's really an urgent need to improve our understanding of these diseases and develop and devise more effective therapies. And one of the key problems is that while patients typically respond well to initial chemotherapy, uh, the treatment success is only very short-lived, and, and patients relapse, and then often with uh, even more aggressive disease, disease, which then cannot be controlled uh, for much longer. And in recent research, including from our own team, has shown that both MDS and AML arise from so-called precancerous stem cells, um, you know, a subpopulation of blood-forming stem cells that have acquired genetic and non-genetic abnormalities. And, and certain varieties of those stem cells, so-called clones, they then go on to develop into leukemia and, and are also capable of sustaining the cancer. And, and you know, unfortunately, these precancerous stem cells are particularly resistant to drugs. And, and we now know that the considerable diversity of these stem cell varieties and clones affect uh, the development and progression, but also disease uh, 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 treatment resistance of both uh, MDS um, and AML. And, and that, you know, really brings us right to the goals of, of our work. You know, what, what causes uh, some of these precancer of stem cells, but not others, um, to become leukemic is not entirely clear, but our recent work has shown that the actions of a group of proteins that normally turn on and turn off genes in a, in a highly coordinated manner, uh, so-called transcription factors, they behave abnormally in these preleukemic stem cells. And what we'll do is we'll try to elucidate and better understand these abnormal transcription factors and how they lead to leukemia uh, in stem cells. And, and again, mm -hmm. the goal is that we can then target those transcription factors directly and, and therapeutically, you know, with, with drugs in the future. Well, Dr. Stoddard, we got to leave it there, but thank you for the work that you've done. Congratulations on your award. And certainly we'll be looking forward to finding out more about how this plays out in the near future. Thank you, Dr. Stoddard, for being with us. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for having me. All righty. Well, I want to let you know now, if you want more information, visit the website at EinsteinMed.org. And of course, you can follow them on social media at Einstein College of Medicine. Do have more show going, uh, continuing. Uh, we ask that you stay with us. Open is coming up right after this.